Hi, I'm Alan and this is Prayers to the Dice Gods and today we're looking at airbrushing. Be sure to click on the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified every Tuesday and Thursday when we release a new video. If you like the video, click on the like button before the channel's chapter finds it and annihilates it into the scariest way to start an airbrushing video is to start with it in pieces. I have fully stripped this down as far as I possibly can and I'm, I'm going to put it back together. What we've got here is what I would say is the best airbrush for a beginner to start with. If you've never done any airbrushing or if you've tried it out like I did, I tried it out with a few of the more expensive ones that other people owned and I really struggled. I found that they clogged all the time. I couldn't get the paint consistency right, I just couldn't seem to work very well with them. And then I invested in this one. What do you need to actually begin airbrushing beyond the equipment that you've got? What you will need is some sort of airbrush thinner. I personally use Vallejo at the moment and airbrush cleaner. Now the main reason for using the Vallejo one here is because it's also a lubricant which comes into play when we clean the airbrush at the end of use. First use that you'll find for an airbrush of course is undercoating your models. For this one I'm using some of the Vallejo grey primer. One of the things I do do, because I like to keep my air pressure quite low, I will thin the primer down with the idea that I'm actually going to give it at least two thin coats, if not more, depending on how it applies to this model. Push the button for air, pull it back for your paint, and then instead of just releasing, push it back forward so that you've just got air coming out to stop a paint buildup on the needle at the front so that you don't splatter it all over your model. This is where you can learn a lot of your confidence. Just doing some undercoating is nice and easy. You'll get to learn how your brush tends to respond to the different paints. So having gone around the model a couple of times, I've gone over it. It's actually ended up with two or three nice thin coats. You'll see that it's no longer green. It's now a lovely gray color ready to take some paint. One of the things you'll need to learn with these primers, particularly through the airbrush, is they do actually take a little bit longer to dry than spray primers. This one on the bottle actually recommends 12 hours for it to cure properly. So if you're going to do your undercoating, though you can do it indoors with this, instead of outside in the freezing cold where your spray cans might go horribly wrong, you can do it nice and evenly. It's a good thing to be doing just before you go to bed because that way if you want to work on the next day, it's gonna have cured. Let's try out some base coating. Another thing that this thing is brilliant for, not only that, but if you've come across some paint ranges that you find, or paint colors that you find really don't like to go on a model very well, this is the best way to put them on. So here, what I've got is the Army Painter Demonic Yellow. It is not the best paint, it's pretty horrendous to be perfectly honest. When you're painting it on, it, the coverage on it is absolutely rubbish. But it's one of my favourite paints to put through the airbrush because it comes out perfect every time I put it through. And because the Army Painter paints are so thick when they come out, it's a great way to learn to thin your paints well. So just in a cup here and we're going to mix some of this up with an airbrush thinner. It's about a 50-50 mix. My air pressure's low, so I know that I can thin this low. I'm going to give it a quick test spray before I stick it on the model. One of the things you might hear if you're watching YouTube videos on how to airbrush is dry tip. What that is is just paint that's dried onto the tip of your airbrush. The easiest solution I've found to sort that out is actually just to take a damp brush, rub it around the end of the needle, put some backflow in and then give it a quick test spray and you'll find that your paint comes back through fine because it's now lubricated your needle again. So let's see what we can do with this airbrush. I have got some models I want to be the Hounds of Morkai for my Space Wolf army. So we're going to start ourselves off with a nice mix of a blue and a black to give us a nice dark tone. We're going to spray this in an upwards motion from the base of the model to fill in the shadows. 
For the first colour we're going to start mixing in with this. We're not going to clean the airbrush out. We're going to keep what's in there in there. We learned this one from Kenny over on Next Level Painting. So we're going to keep going. We're just going to mix in some deep blue so that we get a nice progressive work towards the tone that we actually want. So now we've got that mixed in the cup. We've done our bit of backflow. We're going to spray around the model. When you're airbrushing like this, what we're actually doing is using the zenithal technique, where we're going to take a lighter colour and spray it down from above, but we're actually using this to create our blend from our dark blue-black, going through blue, then we're going to go into the fang. We're going to take that even lighter by adding in some Void Shield blue from Army Painter. So our last highlight that we're going to go for is using Rust Grey. So we mix in a little bit of that as we go along, just to lighten that up so it doesn't look so stark. We're then going to empty the cup on the airbrush completely out. We're going to put in the rust grey. We're going to thin it down. What we're going to do is we're going to use the limiter switch on the back because what we want to start doing is picking out spots that are actually catching the light in a much more pronounced way than the rest of the model. So we're going to hit the top of the helmet, the shoulder pads, knee pads, down the legs, down the arms to pick out where we want those highlights which ordinarily we could do with a brush, we could glaze that in, but I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. Let's try it out with our airbrush. And I must say, I really like the way that actually ended up looking. And when it comes to finishing this model off, the amount of extra work I'm gonna to need to do on that armor is very minimal to get it to a spot that I think is perfect tabletop standard. The best tip is to clean your airbrush as soon as you're done with it. This will make sure that no paint has any time to dry properly because you'll, you'll find that the airbrush cleaner doesn't work as well as it will with fresh paint. Fresh paint that started to dry, it softens up and makes it easy to remove from the components inside the airbrush. That's what we're aiming at here. We're going to squirt some water in, we're going to clean it out, we're going to keep tipping that water out to make sure that the paint started to clear because if we don't do that, we won't be able to see whether or not paint's still coming up into the water. We're gonna fill it up with some airbrush cleaner, pop that off with water and allow it to stand for a minute. And what that does is it helps to soften the paint around the inside of the cup, which we really don't want to stay there. We're then gonna pump some of that through. We're gonna empty it out. We're gonna keep doing some backwash with some water just to make sure that it is clear. We're going to wipe out the inside of that cup. We're then also going to wipe down the front. Make sure that when you take the nozzle off that you pull the trigger back so that the needle retracts and you wipe that off because you don't want to catch that. Then we're going to put the nozzle back on and we're going to give that a quick wipe out. And that's pretty much it. We check to make sure that it's still not spraying some paint through and our airbrush is clean. We know it's ready to go the next time we pick it up. Now, the main reason for starting with this airbrush is the price. It didn't cost a great deal, which means that I'm more likely to do things with it that I wouldn't do with an expensive brush. And what we want to do here is we want to build confidence with this. We don't want people to be frightened of trying these out. This is a cheap airbrush setup. Even if you only use it to base coat or to do undercoats, it's still a good investment, especially when it comes to painting an army. This will make your life so much quicker and make your models look a bit better for a lot less effort than you'd put in with a brush. Of course, you're going to finish them off with a brush, but this thing is going to make your life so much simpler. It's not that expensive. You get everything you need in it. You get a compressor, you get your hose, you get your airbrush. But not only do you get your airbrush, but you actually get four needles with it. They're four different size needles. You get to answer the question of what size needle should I use for airbrushing miniatures yourself. You can try it out. It actually comes down to how you prefer to use your equipment. Same with the paintbrushes. What paintbrush should you use? What size paintbrush should you use? It's literally personal preference. So having that choice of four needles is gonna make your life a bit more interesting and you're gonna get a lot more done if you're going to paint big things like scenery, you're going to whack in the big needle, you're going to go to town with it. 
And the best thing is if I do damage this hair, we're only going to cost £27.95 to replace it. And then I've got everything again. I've got another hose. I've got four more needles. I have another airbrush. I could just run two of these and I can do two different things with them. It's well worth the price. It's well worth doing this to build your confidence with. I really like airbrushing now where a year and a half ago, my experience with airbrushing off and I didn't want to use them anymore. This one has built my confidence up and I am happy to try out lots of different things. So it turns out that airbrushing isn't half as difficult or half as expensive as you think it's going to be. It's a really good thing to learn. You can have a lot of fun. If nothing else, you will have a great new tool for doing undercoats on your models, which you can crack out, save yourself a load of time. Be sure to check out the links in the description. I have linked Kenny over at Next Level Painting there so you can look into other videos on how to airbrush, as well as a link to the airbrush that I own on Amazon.